looks like as it's beginning to develop right before it gets ovulated. And sure enough, it goes through a process and one of them begins to develop and right on day, usually about day 14 of the cycle, pop, it gets ovulated. Some women have even claimed that they can actually feel it ovulate. And then it gets brought in by the little fingers of the fimbriae of the fallopian tubes. And it goes through and it begins its journey down the fallopian tube and hopefully somewhere in here fertilization takes place because those sperm have forged their way all the way up here and then it makes a zygote, it begins to divide, the cells begin to divide, begin to divide and it goes through all of these different names and it becomes a blastocyst and it implants inside of the uterus. Two parts to the uterus, the myometrium or the muscular part, the part that can squeeze and the endometrium. The endometrium is the, is the tissue on the inside of the uterus. It grows every month. It ma reaches its maximum thickness about day 14. If fertilization takes place, it continues to stay and it grows. If no fertilization takes, takes place, then a system shuts it off. It pinches off all of the vessels on the bottom of it. It begins to slough off and on the 28th day, a cycle starts. And so that's the whole process here of how that's growing. And you want that blastocyst to implant inside a rich, thick, nutritious myo endometrium inside the uterus and it's going to be set up just for that. And when it does, this is a cross section through a uterus. Cross section through the uterus, here's the vagina, here's the cervix right here and that little baby is now implanted into the uterus. Here's the muscle or part and it begins to grow and it sends out these chorionic villi and they're going to grow into the uterus and they're going to tap into the nutrients inside the endometrium right there and it's going to make all of these different tissues and in layers inside the uterus. Now there's one thing here called a yolk sac. Now there's no such, that's just evolutionary baggage, baggage. There's never a yolk sac inside this developing little baby. It never has it. It's a place actually where red, the first red blood cells are going to be developing. And that has, it has no yolk, never had yolk, never will have yolk. Why is it thrown in? Because of the evolutionary feeling that we evolved from some primitive type of creature there. So they even mislabel things in medical texts as a yolk sac has nothing to do with it. Just let, that's free, no charge. <laughs> All right. Now this is a picture inside a big gravid uterus. I mean, that's, this is the biggie. And so what you see here, the baby's been, he's, he's not shown right in here, but it shows what's happening. This is the placenta. The placenta has grown into the endometrium. This is part of the umbilical cord. And there are two main layers. There's actually others, but there are two main layers. The amnion is the inner layer and baby's genetic material, baby's genetic material makes the layer of the amnion. You have this chorion layer and that's made from mom's genetic material. And so both mom's material and baby's material are going to cause the linings of the inside of this uterus. And then when baby is born, all of these linings are going to come out, the, uh, the placenta is going to come out, and it's all going to be delivered after the baby. And that's what's, where it's growing. Now, there's a delicate balance, as it says here, between maternal fetal immune response now we're going to go back to immunology and immunology here is, is really, really important in the development of this little baby because just like in, in everybody's body, when you have different cells or different genetic material inside your body and it doesn't have your markers on it, your body's going to do what? Kill. Kill. There you go. <laughs> Kill. Wow. A, a real believer. So. Um, <clears throat> here. Well, what do you think a fertilized egg is? Fertilized egg no longer has mom's markers. Fertilized egg it no longer has dad's markers. It's got completely new markers on it. And it's going to float inside mom's uterus. And inside her uterus are her attack cells. And so mom's own body should do what with that little ball of cells inside her body? Kill it. Kill it. And so how does it ever live in there? How does it ever implant? How does it begin to grow? Well, that's what happens. So you're going to have an overview of the review response. The developing fetus, as it says there, is completely new. Mom's immune system should destroy it. Obviously, this would bring an end to reproduction and an end to evolution right there. But a highly complex process of maternal immune response by the fetus. Now, all the medical term uses the word fetus. 
So sometimes I might say fetus. I'm not an abortionist by any means. Uh, I believe it's a baby, but the term is fetus or embryo. So between the fetus and the placenta, and we're gonna, you're going to have a new appreciation for placenta, facilitates the acceptance of this newly developing embryo. And evolutionary trial and error to get it right is no explanation for it. Right here. Well, what happens? This is a quote from a basic clinical immunology text. It says, when placed in the non-pregnant uterus, allografts, that's tissue from the same species, same species, those are allografts, tissue grafts from the same species, are promptly rejected and cause hypertrophy of the draining paraaortic lymph nodes. Now, what that is saying is this. You even take any kind of tissue, whatever it is, you put it inside a non-pregnant uterus, and mom's body is going to start to kill that piece of tissue. And it's going to react. And just like if you get an infection on any of your part of your body, such as in your face, you get big swollen lymph nodes. Well, the lymph nodes around the uterus are the ones on each side of her aorta. And that's the paraaortic lymph nodes. And they swell up just as if they'd had an infection in them. So the non-pregnant uterus clearly has a reaction to reject, reject any foreign things in it. And that's what this slide is saying here. Implantation of the fetus in the uterus when not prepared by the fetus and placenta would result in a loss of pregnancy. So we have this remarkable role of the placenta, and there it is in all of its glory. That is a newly delivered placenta. Now, I already looked at some of your faces. You went, eh, eh. And I'm saying to you, this thing doesn't get the respect it deserves <laughs> on that. <laughs> this poor placenta right here is a remarkable, remarkable organ, tremendous organ, and we're going to talk about it here. I've delivered a lot of placentas, and you know, they're kind of warm and ooey and gooey and everything else, and women just say, get it out, and uh, then you deliver it right there. But if they only knew how important the placenta was, they would say, I like that placenta, and that, and they would have a new appreciation for it. And this is a picture of a cross section through a placenta. Here's the umbilical cord right here. You have one umbilical vein, you have two umbilical arteries, and baby's blood will come through these, and it'll circulate around through these chorionic villi, circulate around.